Drive slow. Drive slow. Speed up, put our eyes closed. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. Head down. Eyes closed. Eyes cold. Mouth down.
some labels to put on to this thing we keep and dip into when we need. Now don't have the right to ask where you go at night, but the waves sit my head to think someone's in your bed. Just lost the world war, and the scene slips away to the evenness I fake. It's a shit so well, cause I don't really want you, girl. But you can't be free, cause I'm selfish, I'm obscene. Allo, test 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, So, uh, it's with great pleasure that IPTEC with Interstellar Ventures and their partners uh, DLR, Berlin Partner, Technische Universität Berlin, MSc Master of Space Engineering, New Space Vision and Sputnik are welcoming you to this event organized um, by CNES, uh, ESI and ESI Big Suit France, uh, Act in Space Berlin 2018. So it's our first edition. And before beginning, we should like to show you the videos of the organizers. Hello, it's with a great pleasure that today I welcome you on behalf of the CNES, the French Space Agency, founder and developer of Act in Space. The different space agencies all over the world, and especially ESA, the Reopen Space Agency, without whom the extension of Actin Space outside France would not be possible. Our operator, ESA Big Sud France, and all the local organizers join the CNES to welcome you today. Thanks to you, the 2018 edition is a worldwide edition. You are present in more than 70 cities all over the world. Thanks to you, 
The 2018 edition is a worldwide edition. You are present in more than 70 cities all over the world, in the five continents. That's a proof of the universal appeal of space. This edition follows in the spirit of the previous Act in Space competitions. We want to offer you the opportunity to launch a startup improving the everyday life using space technologies. We have, however, spiced up this edition in offering you the chance to uh, become a new space actor or to use space technology to help all humanity. Act in Space is a competition because the fighting spirit makes us all give our best. Nevertheless, if you are not selected by your jury, it's not a problem for your project. If you want to carry on, the CNES, ESA and all our partners will be behind you to help you. Act in Space is a competition, but more than anything else, Act in Space is a time for meeting and sharing. It could be a starting point for a new adventure linked with space and entrepreneurship. Most of all, it should be fun and cool to allow you to have the most innovative ideas. So, enjoy yourself, let your imagination run free, and let the festivities begin! Hello everyone. Hello everyone. It's great to see how many people are taking part. Hello everyone, it's great to see how many people are taking part in the Act in Space. We're very thrilled and excited. We're curious to see how you can turn space technology into something completely new and bring it back on Earth. So be crazy and creative. We're looking forward for fresh ideas that can disrupt the use of space technology as we you know it. And if you have a good idea, we are happy to support this idea and venture in one of our 16 incubation centers across Europe. Have fun and exploring it. My name is Frank Salzgeber of the European Space Agency, ESA. Hi, I'm Odin Zedong, ESA Big Six France Manager in Aerospace Valley. It's a great honor for us to be trusted once again by CNES and ESA to manage international support of Acting Space. I'm really proud to welcome you to this third worldwide edition. Do you know there is more than 2,000 participants in more than 30 countries playing the same time than you? That's really amazing. And we will need your help to make this event even more fun. Ask your local organizer about the QR code of Two Chunks, a French startup which is specialized in collaborative video. You will be able to share your videos with all other participants all around the world. So now you know what you have to do for the next 24 hours. Have a good idea. Have fun, and maybe you will come for the final in Toulouse. Bye bye. So, thanks for listening for the various videos. Um, we are now going to have uh, some messages from our partners. So, we will start off by Epitech. Um, Gregory is going to present it. Hi, Hi everyone. Thank you to, to join us today. Uh, I'm very happy to see uh, all of you. Um, so. I'm, uh, I'm from Epitech. I'm uh, the head of studies of, the, of Epitech, which is an IT school. Uh, so as a, fr a French school, we think that we should participate to this initiative since uh, most of the people organizing that fr come from France. As we know, CNES, the French Space Agency, and Ezabic uh, is also fr from South of France. That's why it's kind of a weird accent, and we don't understand pretty much everything. But um, yeah, uh, we are IT school, we are um, having a master degree in IT, and some of our students here are joining today to m maybe team up with you to work on this project. So I hope it will be successful for all of you, and um, welcome again. Um, 
so now we would like to introduce our partners from the TU Berlin. I'm a bit in the back, but they're coming. I don't think I need that one. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's for the stream. Uh, it's for the stream, okay. Hey, stream. Uh, so, uh, my name is Jan Afscher. Welcome to the Technische Universität Berlin. Uh, I guess like uh, half of the, the participants are students from here, so uh, you already know what I'm going to uh, tell you now. Um, the, for, for the other ones, uh, you're at the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, so we have uh, five chairs, uh, professors with, with big staffs who, who are dealing with um, uh, research in aeronautics, and then we have one chair with space technology, and that's why we were invited here. And um, so we have already uh, launched and operated 16 satellites. So they're uh, in orbit right now, and uh, other ones are in production right now. So uh, there will be tours uh, around the department, so you might see the labs and the satellites um, there if you're interested. And uh, I also want to um, thank Miss Isabel Zuhantke, who's in the back, the uh, lovely lady in the pink dress, um, because uh, solely thanks to her, um, uh, you're able to be here today. And uh, she organized everything around it, and uh, so we, we can use all the uh, spaces in the department. So give her a, thank, a round of applause. Um, that would be nice. Thank you very much. Um, so, and of course, um, we wish you good luck and have fun. Uh, I guess you all don't like to sleep. I don't know what's going on with you. But um, we'll be around. We'll be sticking around. We'll, uh, we'll help you. So if you have any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll do rounds. I, I worked on space projects and stuff. So now, right now, I'm managing the uh, Master of Space Engineering study program that was mentioned here. So you'll meet uh, the students here who are studying um, uh, if two year study in a two-year space engineering study program. Uh, so if you have an, any interest and questions about that, you can ask me too. Um, so good luck, have fun, enjoy, and see you later. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to um, have a welcoming message from our um, uh, partner and co-organizer, Interstellar Ventures. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. It's really great to see all of you here. My name is Sebastian Strauber. I'm the uh, founder of Interstellar Ventures. And uh, one of the topics uh, which we are really excited about is the, the whole ecosystem and, you know, really see how many of you are here and uh, what the possibilities also really are for Berlin as an as an hub for uh, new space innovation. And this is something what I would like also to highlight a little bit um, because what this opportunity actually really is for Berlin uh, is to kickstart some entrepreneurial activities related to new space. And as you have, as you will see here and also later on in the presentation uh, from Ilana, uh, it's basically the maybe seeding of a new industry which might be growing very large in the future. And uh, we as Interstellar Ventures are really committed to, uh, to support early stage entrepreneurs by introducing them to financing mechanisms, but also to customers, really helping this industry to grow. So therefore, um, we are really super excited to be uh, the co-organizer of this event, and uh, very much looking forward to be also involved as mentors. This is Christian, also from Interstellar Ventures, over there. And uh, yes, we are very much looking forward to your ideas. Be bold, uh, be visionary, and uh, maybe go also to the moon. Who knows? So also from my side, welcome, and uh, let's have really great fun. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. So now, uh, last mes welcome message from our partners, so Berlin partners. So hello also from my side. I'm going to give you a short presentation about the new space industry. Uh, of Berlin, of the German capital region. Um, Sebastian already introduced the presentation. So my name is Juliana Haupt. I work for Berlin Partner for Business and Technologies. Uh, this is the local develop and technology um, development board uh, of the state Berlin. And um, the, uh, <laughs> the company focuses on seven industrial sectors. So the sectors are optic, service-based economy, industrial production, power engineering, health economy, uh, ICT, and transport, mobility, and logistics. And this is where I work for. So the cluster, transport, mobility, and logistics, and the, the cluster is um, divided in five uh, industrial sectors we focus on. And these five sectors are automotive, uh, logistics, 
uh, ITS, Rail Transport Technology and the Aerospace Industry. And the Aerospace Industry is the industry I am responsible for. So I am the space lady. I'm responsible for to take care of all the companies, all the organizations, all the research institutions that are um, active in aerospace to support them in their projects, to uh, initiate projects, to, uh, to support them in marketing activities or in, in any activities, uh, to do the networking, so to connect all the uh, people with each other and not only in the region, also um, nationwide or worldwide. So, um, yeah, and in our uh, sector of aerospace, we have uh, three main focuses. The, fir the first one is UAV, Airbus, so uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. Um, so, for instance, we have here uh, the, the um, this is a drone uh, that wa is developed in uh, Berlin, and this is the one that uh, is developed in Brandenburg, that's the area around Berlin. Um, and here we have an, an app provider that uh, developed an app for drones. So we have a lot of very interesting companies uh, that are focusing there. Uh, another focus is the aviation industry. So we have, for instance, in the region, um, some companies who do, um, who build complete airplanes. That's very interesting. Um, for instance, so, th so for instance, the one over there, it's an airplane that was built here in the German capital region. It's a two-seats airplane, and yeah, I think that's quite impressive. And we have um, also a lot of, a lot of other uh, focusing, but today we focus on space, and this is, the, this is our big strength, strength, especially here in Berlin. So this is the new space industry, so we are very strong in new space. So like uh, uh, developing nano, micro, and small satellites and uh, the technologies that are belonging to. So for instance, you can see here the TED satellite. It's a satellite that was developed by Astro fein and Feinberg Technik, Atlas Hof GmbH. And, and over there you can see the DOF. It's not a satellite that was developed here in Berlin or in the German capital region, but by a company uh, that is also located here now um, uh, by Planet Labs. It's well known and one of the important, uh, most important players worldwide, I guess, uh, in the new space industry. And they have um, their seat here also in Berlin where they manage almost 200 satellites that are in the orbit and they are managing it uh, every day. So we, they gain every day a picture, a 3D picture of the Earth. That's very impressive, I guess. So we also uh, launch satellite missions and do everything about uh, satellite missions, hardware and component, of course. We have uh, quite a lot of uh, companies that uh, use uh, satellite data, GNSS data, and do Earth observation, um, so the downstream. Uh, then we have the company, uh, I think you've all heard of them, it's the PT scientists that are uh, about to do the mission to the moon that's planned for uh, the end of next year. So they uh, built the rover, this is this one, uh, and also the lander, the moon lander, the Alina. Um, you could also see, uh, probably you've seen the movie, the last alien movie, there you could see actually the rover in there because the director called the company and asked for if they can uh, get the rover in there in the movie. So, <laughs> yeah, and there you can see a satellite picture from Planet. And this is also uh, very impressive to show you a short um, what we are all doing. So this is uh, some of the parts. So what is the agenda of the new space industry here in the German capital region? So we want to establish New Space Berlin. So as you can see here, so we are not one of the classical known regions for space industries, like for instance, Bavaria or Bremen. Uh, but we are very strong in all the new space development. So commercial space, uh, nano, micro, and small satellites. So this is, these are very uh, good strengths of the region. And um, we want to strengthen this. We want to strengthen the network. We want to that it's get to, uh, that it's more visible. So, and for instance, with this 
um, event today and tomorrow. This is very good. And I'm also very happy that we have this here in Berlin uh, next to the two locations, um, Munich and Darmstadt, uh, that are already very well known for space. So I think we can be very proud of it to have you all here. And yeah, we want to set up a lighthouse project. So projects where we, uh, um, where different partners of the region set up a project together that is uh, very famous and be where you can look on the German capital region and you will say this is a project that was um, developed here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one of the projects that might be also interesting for you all guys uh, is we want to uh, found an ESA BIC here in Berlin. That is planned for 2020. And ESA BIC is a business incubation center that is um, uh, partly funded by the ESA, partly funded by uh, the local or the, the, the German um, funding organization, the, um, the DLR, and um, that is partly funded by the state um, Berlin and Brandenburg. So um, we have currently 18 ESA BICs in uh, Europe. And uh, business incubation center means that it supports startups that um, uh, have something to do with space. So this doesn't mean that you have to develop a satellite, but th probably that you, for instance, that you, that you use satellite data or whatever, and you have a, a, an innovation that you want to do or that you are um, focusing on, and then you get the support. And this is our role model. This is the ESA Big uh, Switzerland um, in Zürich. And uh, there you can see all the partners that are involved. And on the next slide, you can see this is the vision of 2020, how we want to have the ESA BIC here in the German capital region. And these are the majority of companies that are here in the region uh, that have something to do with uh, space and that are active in space. And this is our vision, how we want to achieve it. And on the next slide, you can see the companies and organizations that already committed for the ESA BIC. And up to 2020, we want to, uh, um, yes, to, to develop that it looks like the previous slide you've seen. And probably some of you will be part of the ESA BIC then in the future. Yeah, so far from me, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact me later. I'm here in Berlin and I'm, I will be also here and tomorrow, uh, today and tomorrow. And I wish you all a nice event today. And so Thank you. So now to go on the event itself. Um, yep. So uh, to go on the event itself, uh, we have organized a Slack channel, and um, you can also apply for a partner process directly. Take a look at this URL. Uh, we can send it to you. We'll send everything on the Slack channel itself. Um, and of course, the business model canvas that we'll need to support your project to show that it's a valid model. And on the event itself, um, the Act in Space event uh, was created in 2014 uh, for the first edition, and now we are on the fourth edition in 2018. Its goal is to promote space technologies and the use of space technologies, but also develop entrepreneurship for the people. Sorry. And of course, find uh, candidates for the incubators for, for the uh, ES, uh, ESAPIC incubators. And of course, for the uh, others or those who just want to win <laughs> partner prizes or just have some fun, well, bah, have fun. Um, concerning the rules, the teams are made of two to five people, and uh, you will, uh, the validation criteria for your project will be uh, the use of space or uh, data, or uh, space-related data or technologies. Uh, it has to be innovative or original, at least. Uh, and beneficial for society and sustainable on an economic level. Um, now we're going to talk about the jury and mentors. Sebastian? No. Oh, Christian. Christian. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. So, hello everybody, I'm Christian, and I'm responsible for the mentors here. And we have a few guys here running around who have this pink band. And all of these guys, there's some in the back, not everybody is here, some people come tomorrow, but 
a few are already here. They support you with all questions. They come from different fields. So they come from business modeling. They're successful founders, for example, and know how to, do, to create business models. But they also come, for example, from a technical background. So there are a few people who worked already in space engineering a long time. Other people are good in, in product development or ideation. For example, what we also can do, if a lot of people are interested in the topic of business model generation, we can do a workshop for you in another room. That depends how many people want to participate, and we can do this later on the day or tomorrow. Um, we won't be all around all the time, but um, there will be always people here at this place. And of course, it depends if we move then or you move then to other rooms in the building, then we can also come to you. We communicate through the Slack channel, so if there is an announcement or anything, please subscribe to it, because we, we can't constantly walk through the whole building, it's like 10 levels or so, even higher. So, um, and these rooms, as I said, they're spread around. We have also, um, what you already mentioned, the business model canvas, not only as a URL, we have it also printed out over there for everybody who wants to work offline <laughs> with post-its or just writing into it. There's also a kind of description in it what you should do with every field, so that's easier for you. It is in the end necessary that you have a filled out business model canvas um, because that's part of the hackathon, of course, that you create a valid and yeah, sustainable business model for your, for your idea. And yeah, I think that's it. And if you have any questions, just come to me or Sebastian or all the other people. We can, sure, of course, all the people. I can't introduce them all because that would take too much time. But as I said already, somebody with a pink band, Regina, for example, she's not here yet. Yeah, so everybody who is like there, the jury members, they have then blue, so they are also coming, but tomorrow they can also, of course, help you, for example, here from Early Bird, from Venture Capital Company tomorrow is somebody here. If you have then questions about financing, for example, you can come to me or this person. So how, how does this work with startup fu funding? How does this work with private equity? How does this work with public funding, with subsidies, with grants, all these things? You can also, of course, come to Berlin Partner, who are also doing that. That's a kind of essential thing to understand better how you get actually from the very from the pre-seed, very beginning, to the market entry, which comes then later on. Yeah, that's it in basic words. and. The jury, yeah, I was already mentioning. So Juliana is also part of the jury and Milda, but, but Milda is not there. She's from Early Bird, what I already mentioned. But they are actually coming then here in action tomorrow. So because tomorrow we will see what you actually produced and then, yeah, they will decide what's the best. Sebastian and Alex are also coming and, um, yeah, are extending that. So they're all over for people, but they are not all here yet. And if there are any questions later on, then just, yeah, just to come to us, talk to us. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to show you the URL again. Uh, to join the Slack channel, it's a direct invite link. Uh, so tinyurl.com slash actinspace dash slack. Yeah, it's a Berlin one. Uh, actinspace Berlin 2018. Okay, perfect. Um, so now we'd like to invite uh, Daniel uh, from Livio to have a little talk. So um, uh, first of all, I'm happy that I made it on time because uh, the enterprise uh, transport had some issues and I had to take the bike. Um, and um, so do I need the mic or is it? Uh, it's, oh, it's a live stream. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I'm happy to see so many uh, people here in the room. Um, I like this room because um, I'm, I'm organizer of New Space Vision, an event series, and most of the meetups uh, we are doing here in this room. So. Uh, first of all, I, I have a question for the audience. Um, who has a business background in the audience? Can you raise your hand? Raise up your hand. Who has a technical background in engineering, not computer science? Okay. Who has a, a background in computer science or GOIT? Okay. So. Um, it's good, first of all, that um, everyone who is a technician uh, gets a, a guy 
who um, has an idea of uh, business. Um, so I think the few people here are very, very, uh, yeah, you need to share them a bit. Um, so as you can see, um, this was in October 2016, in this room actually, and it uh, was the founder of Berlin Space Technologies, Tom Segert. And I was sitting in the audience, like you today, and uh, listened to him. He told us um, the, um, yeah, his way from uh, a student to his own satellite company. So they are manufacturing satellites here in Berlin. They have more than 25 um, employees today, and it was really inspiring for, uh, for us, for all in the audience. And um, today, um, I will do th the same for you. So I will share the story of LiveView and also what we are doing. So LiveView is an Earth observation startup, and uh, we are enabling real-time Earth observation for infrastructure networks. Oh yeah, I need to click on it. Oh, yeah. um, so in um, between 2015 and 2017, in Germany alone, there were 830 collisions of trains with vegetation. That's incredible. The last two autumn storms, Xavier and Herbert, caused 30 million train cancellations and 2 million people were affected by that. So um, how to solve those problems? We think by space, space technology, in particular satellites. Germany alone has more than 500,000 kilometers of infrastructure networks in the three verticals, energy, gas, and railway. That's more than the distance to the moon. But, and what they all have in common, that um, you have to monitor them in a very manual procedure. So for example, Deutsche Bahn, they have alone in the vegetation monitoring 1,000 empl uh, employees who are walking along the railway, taking data ver in a very manual procedure. Sometimes what they do use um, are aerial surveys or helicopter planes, uh, helicopter flights. That's a lot of fun, but it, that's very costly, and that's not scalable. You cannot fly along the um, railway grid, which is 33,000 kilometers, once a month or every two weeks. That's in the million euros cost. And what we also recognize is, is that the database that they have, so um, the, the maps, they are more than three years old most of the times, and they're using uh, desktop tools in a very manual procedure. That's also not scalable, so we from Life, you are optimizing this um, entire pipeline. So in the past years, there was a revolution in Earth observation. With the start of the um, Copernicus program, you can really get data for free. And this is really enabling you to analyze large areas. But also in the private sector, we had a revolution. So with Planet, for example, who also have an office in Berlin, um, you have since uh, November 2017, one image a day, if you want, from every place on Earth. That's crazy. Another trend in um, Earth observation are autonomous UAVs. We are not there yet, but we will be there in the future that you can also have the data from UAVs into the um, Earth observation um, pipelines. And of course, we have scalable cloud solutions such as AWS or Google Cloud, where, where you really, really combine the data. You don't need to spend 100,000 euros into a server architecture when you are a student and want to start your venture. You can just uh, use a free tier from Amazon for zero euro, and then, uh, and then you can build your application. That's very, very cool, and that, that was not there five years ago. So um, this is um, um, our um, um, use case, what we are doing for Deutsche Bahn, for example. This is a Sentinel-2 image from Berlin. It's um, um, yeah, in, in near, near Cottbus, actually. And what the good thing about Sentinel is that you, um, this is how we see as a human um, the, the colors, but uh, Sentinel has 13 bands. So it's not about object detection. You can identify materials based on the spectral signature. So this is a false color image from the same scene. And what you can see here is that vegetation lights up very red. And uh, man-made structures are blue. But what's also very interesting is that um, even um, agricultural um, land, which is um, yeah, uh, where the farmer just uh, got his, uh, his, his food there, um, that it's uh, not red anymore. So you really can see the, the health of the, of the field. Um, and that's very crazy. What we are doing then at LiveView is we are um, um, extracti extracting information in an automated manner. So this, for example, what you can see here in, see here in green is the vegetation, uh, are trees. Not every kind of vegetation, only trees. And what we then can do is, you remember the first um, slide for, um, of Deutsche Bahn, 800 collisions with trees. We can solve this problem. We can tell them exactly where it's too close to the grid. So, for example, when it's... Um, 
in a, a range of uh, six meters, it's red. And we already did this for entire Germany. So we now can tell them the uh, 33,000 kilometers, there, there, and there, there's the risk. There you need to go into the system. And they had a lot of political pressure, so this um, gave us a really good um, situ yeah, position with Deutsche Bahn, so that we are now in, um, uh, contracting with them for a long-term contract. But one and a half years ago, there was no live EO. So it was a very, very fast procedure. And within this short time period, we could um, uh, start proof of concept also with SAP, the biggest software company from Europe. And now we um, start with 50 Hertz, which is one of the four um, energy transmission uh, net providers. We're gonna start a proof of concept in August. The interesting thing is that um, with those uh, new, with the revolution of Earth observation, it's a really new um, technology dimension. They cannot even imagine. If you talk to those um, businesses, and that's what I recommend everyone, when you have an idea, go to the business before you have technology to um, talk to them. They cannot believe that this is working. Deutsche Bahn, the vegetation manager, couldn't believe that we can do this for Germany uh, within a very short time period. We showed him, and he couldn't believe that because they, now they just plan to send um, 1,000 people within the next three years to get data. So it's very, very crazy. Um, so infrastructure is our, our core. But there are a lot of other businesses, and I guess you heard a lot of um, um, different uh, yeah, business opportunities with Earth observation data um, today. So, um, of course, you have agriculture. There is a lot of going on. Um, but also um, environment. I don't know if you can see that in the last row on the um, image in the um, top, um, uh, on, on top right. There's oil in, in the water, and you can track that from space. It's crazy. Another very, very cool thing is, um, which is from technology-wise a bit harder, is um, ZAR technology, so synthetic aperture radar. That is very, very crazy. You can um, monitor, you can track ground movements by millimeters. I was just two weeks ago at Airbus in Potsdam and they showed me, it, it's very crazy. They, they can, um, for example, for Stuttgart, they um, wanted to track the surface movement of buildings. And you could click on every single house and see the change of the surface moving within, I, I guess, 60 points a year for each house. You could really see how it's moving. It's crazy. Another really cool thing is with high resolution data, for example, um, Orbital Insight is doing that. Um, they are going into the finance industry and disrupting the finance industry. So what you can see on the bottom right is actually um, oil storage tanks from China, and they're building a, an index for the Chinese oil market based on satellite imagery, and the predictions are pretty good. So that was a, a brief introduction of live view and other applications you can do. So now I want to share the, the uh, way we did it um, with live view. In November 2016, no, 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 no. In November 2016, just a um, few weeks after the meetup from um, Tom Segert who inspired us, we started uh, with um, our own project. Sven and I, we paid 100 euros each on a bank account, registered uh, a, a small business, and um, said, okay, let's spend one day a week and try a bit with the Earth observation data. Our first application was actually a tourism application, um, where we merged Sentinel data, uh, which you can see in the big um, frame, with very high resolution data from World, and we thought, okay, um, let's classify beaches, and of course, you know, all know Trivago and those um, a travel agency. Um, that's affiliate based. So we thought, hey, maybe, maybe this is uh, a nice way to, um, uh, yeah, to start an Earth observation company. Um, and uh, the, the interesting thing is we talked to Trivago. They liked the idea, but they didn't want to uh, spend money on that. What, what we uh, then uh, did, um, we um, applied for an uh, ESA call, which was outdoor tourism application. So it was a perfect match for us. Um, we applied, but it was very, very complicated, um, and we didn't succeed there. But that didn't mean uh, that we stopped where we were. We took the technology we developed, the knowledge we, we gained through this project, and in May um, 2017, we started with the Project Live View, a completely different, um, that was a bit fast, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Sorry. it's okay. Um, so in May 2017, we started with Live View, monitoring infrastructure and combining different data sources. Um, no, exactly. And um, we applied, so th that was really the first thing, we applied for the Copernicus Masters and the European Satellite Navigation Competition. And um, five months later, we won um, the, um, 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 yeah, 
the BMBI Earth Observation Challenge for Gi Digital Transport Applications. Um, that was um, really interesting because now you have the same opportunity here on this weekend to earn such a prize and that was an enabler for us because um, we, with this prize we got into an accelerator where we also got money, so out of nothing, as a side project beside university, we then at this point in November 2017 had 30,000 uh, euros on the bank account and we could um, grow our team. Today, it's crazy, we have eight people um, next week we're gonna um, be 10 with two interns and it's really, it, it's, it's, it can be very fast and you all here in this, in this room can have the same way. It's not, it's not um, magic. You all can do this. And even when it's not, uh, when you don't win a prize in the, in the first try, do a second, do a third. Change your business, change your idea and then it can really work. To summarize it, this is our way how we did it. Um, we applied for w one um, uh, master's, we won one master's, and that's also a thing, when you win one, it's gonna be easier to get others. It's really, th th this first, they all need an approval, and Act in Space is a perfect um, approval, because uh, what's also interesting, you have the regional challenge, then you have the um, uh, country challenge, and then you have the, um, the entire challenge for Europe, I guess, right? So you, have, um, you can compete with, with others, and uh, there are a lot of opportunities for you. What um, we then did, after winning those prizes, we really engaged with the, with the companies and they are interested in this. If you have a cool idea and if it doesn't make sense, talk to them, no fear, do cold calls, go to events and talk to them, it really helps. And then when you have the customer, you get more additional input, you can uh, optimize your application and you can develop your core product. From the idea, from the technical prototype, of course, it's, it's a long way to develop a product. We now um, have are in this phase and it's, uh, you have a lot of challenges um, in, in that time, but don't think about that yet. When you're at that point, you, are, you, you, you came very far. And, um, and this is also a thing you will solve. Well, once you are at this point, when you are going all in, you will also develop the product to market readiness. And yeah, we are now at the transition from the core product to generating um, paying clients. So we're gonna launch our um, a monitoring um, software suite um, uh, this year, um, um, maybe in September, maybe October, maybe um, like Elon Musk, maybe next year, I don't know. Um, but uh, the good thing is that um, we have uh, our partners, Deutsche Bahn, 50 Hertz, and they're also paying us for developing a, um, um, an idea that's also very interesting. Um, yeah, so to motivate all of you for, for today. This is a sentence of uh, Jeff Bezos, space is the new internet. So I showed you an earth observation downstream um, um, startup, um, but there are also a lot of opportunity, opportunities in hardware. Uh, and I mean, Berlin is uh, the best place for that. We have a lot of small set companies. Um, all, um, we have uh, Berlin Space Technologies, Astrofine, um, German Orbiter Systems. Um, so you all can also do that. We have the, um, the network here in Berlin and you have the partners, you have Professor Bees here, it, everything is um, here. Um, and um, what you also have in Berlin, of course, is you have a, a startup ecosystem, you have venture capitalists. Um, and I mean, this is the number of VCs investing in space, not the amount they invest, but the number of VCs, and it's, it's, it's skyrocketing. So um, if you have a very crazy idea, continue the crazy idea. Because um, with, with small ideas, you, won't, you may not, um, may not yeah, attract people for your idea, for your vision. So if you have a crazy idea, no fear, just do it, just continue with it. And we from Life, you want to monitor every infrastructure network on the, on the planet. That's crazy, but that's our vision. And you can also do that. And this weekend is your time to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Marco from Valley Space. Uh, are there any questions? I'm just asking, do yeah. people have questions? Uh, yeah, of course. Why not? Uh, how tough was it for you to build a rapper with the country? To build? To build a rapper with Deutsche Bahn is tough for them to be convinced enough for, you, for them to give you a time, uh, for them to give you input. Uh, how tough was it? How did you go about it? Um, it was tough for Deutsche Bahn, for example. Um, we uh, uh, we had a pitch deck for them. We talked at events to, to different people. That was very interesting. So I think we contacted about um, uh, ten people from Deutsche Bahn, 
Then we met uh, someone, he liked the idea, but he was not responsible, so he sent the um, uh, presentation to another guy in Deutsche Bahn. Um, but then something very interesting happened. Um, at one day, we got a call from the vegetation manager, who is responsible for 125 million euros for the vegetation monitoring. And he said, okay, um, I got your presentation from two independent employees from Deutsche Bahn, so I thought I may call you. Um, and uh, yeah, we didn't know how the way and in the end was to the concern, but at the end they were interested. Yeah. And uh, with uh, 50 Hertz, that was actually a cold call by my co-founder Sven. He, he called uh, them, he, he googled uh, some, um, some guys uh, in, the, in the internet, and then uh, they invited us because we had persistence. We sent them an email, a follow-up email, and once we, we were there at the headquarters of 50 Hertz with, I don't know, eight people from them from different departments and telling them uh, the idea and the, the concept and the technology uh, and the prototype, um, then they, they loved it. And it, then it was just about, okay, how um, do we um, going to do this pilot project? And we made three suggestions and um, they, they took one. They took the smallest, but it was still, uh, it, it's still a high pilot project, so that's also, yeah. Um, another question? Uh, how did you arrive at the idea to use Google Chrome Tools to solve the problem of the vegetation monitoring? Uh, how did you know that Deutsche Bahn would be interested in starting on this kind of project? Oh yeah, that, that's a good question. We had no idea. Um, we just thought, oh, maybe that could work. So it was, um, we made a lot of assumptions. Um, today we also do, m every day we are making assumptions um, and we are discussing them. And at the end, it's very interesting how, uh, how much um, um, or how often those assumption assumptions are right. So um, in 2017, um, before we had contact to the Deutsche Bahn, we analyzed um, a scene for Sentinel regarding the railways because we thought, oh, this, this really does make sense. Why is no one doing that? Um, and yeah, that's uh, how we came uh, yeah, to this idea. Yeah. So it's do uh, assumptions, be clever, and uh, just... Um, yeah, brainstorm a lot, but discuss also a lot, and uh, be critical. Um, the good thing is that I have a co-founder, and uh, we both have al always different opinions in the beginning, and discussing them, and at, at the end we find a very, very good uh, way. So it's not, I guess, never it was Sven's way or mine way. We always discussed a lot. We discussed really emotional, and then we, uh, we found our way. That's also a good opportunity today to find a co-founder, actually. Another question? Uh, were you able to respond to any uh, obstruction on the track? Did you respond real time? How do you respond to respond? Because uh, we take the cases on daily basis. Do you analyze on daily basis and inform them on a weekly basis, or is it real time? Um, no, we are building risk models. Um, w uh, we are not there yet that we can do it in real time. And um, the things, it's not necessary. So okay. it's, it's not necessary. They, they have uh, easier problems to solve first. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So now we are going to enter a Skype conf call with Marco Witzmann, uh, who is going to present a speech from uh, Valley Space. Le correspondant que vous essayez de joindre n'est pas disponible. Merci de laisser un message. Ok, nous allons essayer de contacter him. And uh, try again. Ok. Oui, nous avons him. Hello! Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello, Marco. Hi. Can you hear us? <laughs> awesome. I'm going to share my screen, huh? Can you see my screen? Yes, everything's perfect. Cool. I have you on the live feed here on the side, so uh, I also see a bit of you.
Yeah? Hello? Yep, yeah, yeah, we see everything. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marco. I'm, uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Valley Space. Um, and uh, Valley Space is an engineering software, so it helps you build um, complex products such as rockets, satellites, and so on. And uh, the idea was to talk a bit today, and I prepared some slides also to, to show you a bit uh, what we do and, 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 and how, most of all, how we came to actually build what we've built in the past. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just tell a bit. So, um, so basically every good story, again, same as for you, will probably not start today, but it actually has started before. So you probably had to have, have some kind of uh, enthusiasm for something. This was me. Uh, I was always a bit uh, into space. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, with, with that background, I, I, start, uh, I studied space engineering at some point in in Munich and uh, got always more interested and uh, at the end of the university I, I had the big hopes that uh, space engineering would be a bit like this or like Iron Man or something and uh, I was lucky I got a job at, uh, at uh, OHP which is the third biggest satellite manufacturer in Europe and I worked there three and a half years and what I had to find out on, on my way there is that in reality uh, space engineering works more like this so um, uh, actually, in my in my last uh, project that I had, uh, the satellite was still to be launched four years uh, later, and um, we already had twenty thousand official and three hundred thousand unofficial documents. So these were all test reports and interface data sheets and all of that stuff, and it was all inconsistent on the server version two, version three. And people were basically just copy pasting from one place to the other, trying to make everything work at the same time. And as engineers, it was really frustrating um, to see that uh, you, you think that space is this mm -hmm. high-tech industry, but there's still so much in the space industry that has to has still to be disrupted. And uh, the engineering approach was one of those. And uh, yeah, so the question is, what, what do you do when you have such an idea? And I was basically at the same point as you are. So this is uh, me, 2015. Uh, I went to a startup weekend space in Bremen, so not much different from you guys. And uh, I met a team. So um, this was our team at that weekend. And basically, we took the idea that I had and uh, worked on it. Yeah, with, with the whole team over the whole weekend, little sleep. Uh, prototyping, thinking, discussing, and so on. And uh, yeah, from there, um, as it always happens, uh, the ride went very smooth, right? So we just got lots of funding. We went into the big offices. And no, I'm just kidding. O obviously, you guys will face that as long as you're not building uh, Tinder for cats. Uh, it's not as easy. You're not going to just have an idea and people are going to throw money at you and so on. So uh, the real story is actually a bit a bit more tricky. So the real story is that uh, I kept my job uh, build, being a satellite engineer. And this is me programming on the train. So I was living in Osnabrück and commuting to Bremen every day to my job. And uh, on that way, I, uh, I programmed uh, our software, basically. And uh, my co-founders would do that uh, also nights and weekends together with me. So we would take our own money, fly around through Europe because the other guys came from other places and we would meet. And when other people would be going to the lake or something, we would be spending our nights and weekends uh, programming our software and trying to make this thing work, um, which, sounds, which sounds like a, like a thing that not everybody wants to do. But if you find something that you're really passionate about, uh, it actually feels like you're creating something big. And so uh, from the big team that we had at, the, at that startup weekend, it turned out that it was the three of us, so that's Simon, Louise, and me. Um, and uh, yeah, we were the ones who were in the end interested enough to spend all of our nights and weekends on it. So uh, today, it's all about finding your team, working with those people, and so on. 
you will find out on the long run um, like who's gonna stick with this and who's gonna work with it perfectly you don't it doesn't have to be perfect today it's, it will probably just come up over time but uh, you need uh, then people are really enthusiastic who keep keep pushing it and that's us on a Silicon Valley trip that we that we then earned with Valley Space when we when we won a pitch competition later and basically well from there uh, we worked a lot lots of whiteboarding lots of trying to find out ways of how to build this software um, lots of time when you read about startups it always seems like people tell you we found each other then there was a long time of struggle and tada here we are very successful and um, the problem is that we all focus a lot on the successful part so uh, there's a lot of part in between where it's really uh, grinding and where you just work and you have no idea if it's gonna turn out well or not but you're just doing it and that's something that uh, if you have the feeling that uh, you've you found something great and you want to invest the time do it and then just don't get uh, don't get distracted or, or something on the way just just keep working on it um, and that's basically what we did and at some point we had bothered all of our surroundings so much with our ideas and the things that we wanted to do and so on uh, that actually some people decided to give us some money so it was friends and family and fools FFF uh, better said fans obviously um, who then decided to uh, to actually give us some money and to allow us with this to go full time and work on our software. So that was the time when no venture capitalist would believe in us, and but there were friends and family who did. And then that's basically us. So this was still uh, working from the living room of my co-founder, Luis, uh, us programming the whole weekend. You can see we have very happy faces after long nights of, of programming. Um, and this is 2017, so you can see the the things have our work and have to mature. But in the end, uh, well, we've built a software, and then you can actually do analysis with your software. You can develop satellites in your software. It connects to other softwares, and and this is when we started having small customers. And uh, this is basically the big day when we signed our first contract with Airbus. So uh, yeah, it was a very exciting day. We, we managed to get a big contract with the chief technology office of Airbus. And uh, now uh, I'm happy to say on the left, that's our office here in Lisbon, uh, where people are working right now. We just announced yesterday evening that uh, we just got a seed investment uh, of one million. Um, we're hiring more people to join our team. So um, yeah, as, as also the, the speaker before said, sometimes it, there's a long time gonna be just struggling and then sometimes it can go very fast so so that's also what we're experiencing um, even that is not easy though but uh, but you can go from the day that you're today there uh, to something big with a team uh, and uh, but always keep in mind uh, these are three cars and only one of those is from one of our co-founders and I can tell you it's not yellow so uh, don't believe that startup life is as glamorous and as whatever as you might see it on TV. It's mostly uh, lots of passionate work with smart people, um, lots of decision taking, nobody to tell you what's right or wrong, which is good and is bad at the same time because you have all the responsibility to make it work yourself. So uh, if there's one thing I can tell you already right now, then it's basically... Uh, uh, we are the way people we've been waiting for. So if you see any problems, if you see any opportunities, don't wait for someone else to just solve it because probably it won't happen. So just go ahead, take today as a great starting point, work on it. And if you like it and you feel passionate about it, just stay with it. Hello, Marco, can you hear us? I can hear you, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I think it was really inspiring presentation. A round of applause for you. <laughs> Do you have many, uh, may maybe any suggestions for uh, these uh, aspiring entrepreneurs here in the room, how they could um, go after the idea and really think about the problem they are going to solve? Maybe from your uh, experience, some, some suggestions. 
Yeah, so I think the 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 biggest mistake that people that people make is not think from a customer side. And uh, we catch ourselves doing that from time to time, right? From time to time we get like we fall in love with the technology, we find that oh this would be cool and we could think of this. But the most important thing for everything is just try to put yourselves into the shoes of a person and what are their problems, right? People never buy your software or your solution because of its technology or because of what you did or your story or anything. They, they buy it because they have a problem, at least in the B2B business. It might be different in, in, in B2C when you like just try to make something cool and people like it. But when you're talking business to business, people have problems and they want them solved. And if you can, sh if you can make that connection, if you can see, oh, there's a real problem for people. People spend real time and money on it. It's like really something people struggle with uh, every day. Um, then this is a hunch that you should follow. And then you should see how you can solve that problem the easiest way possible. So what would your suggestion be for um, actually not having customers in a room today uh, to you know, come up with some um, valid uh, ideas for, for doing this during the weekend? Yeah, I would say research. Like just spend some time, like don't just take the first 10 minutes and think, oh, maybe millionaires really want to know how big their mansion is and uh, have measurements from space from that. But rather like, Really, uh, if you have an idea, just try to Google it a bit. Like, are people complaining about it? Can you find any industry report where people say how much time is lost on this? Uh, do I know a person who works in that industry or something? Can I just call that person? So, so just don't be shy. Like, call that person and ask him, like, is that a problem for you? Like, have you ever thought of this? Um, so just, I mean, you will not be able to validate everything within this weekend. That's clear. But just take a bit of time and 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 try to get some feedback from people who who are affected, either by reading about them or by calling them. And uh, you're gonna be surprised. They're gonna tell you more things that will bring you forward in your idea, and it will make it more clear what exactly they want and need. Very good. Thank you very much. Are there any questions to Marco? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Very clear. Thank you again, Marco, and congratulations. Bye bye.
Do they need to present themselves to n what kind of knowledge they have? Oh, they are not interested. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how is there and how many people are there? There's no groups at all. Okay, maybe you can talk together and do something. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, um, hello everyone, uh, I'm Nicolas, uh, I'm in the fourth year of uh, study at uh, Epitech. So I have a technical background in uh, compute, uh, IT computing and I just come here to discover this field and have uh, some challenge. So if you're interested by uh, an IT guys, I can maybe help you. Uh, yeah. um, as my colleague said, uh, as, uh, as worked uh, with uh, machine learning, Python, uh, C++, C, or this kind of technology. So if you are interested in, uh, ask me. Thank you, Nicola. Um, to any of the people who don't have any groups, can you present yourself? Hi, I'm Quentin. I'm in the. F I'm in. Okay. Hi, I'm Quentin. I'm a fourth year of uh, IT research and uh, IT students. I have uh, some background on IPIs, on C, C++, Java, Python. I have a little knowledge on deep learning and I have big knowledge on data managing. So yeah, that's it. If uh, someone uh, wants me in your group, uh, just tell me. <laughs> You, you want to present yourself? Thank you. Hey everybody, great to be here. Thanks for organizing the fantastic event here. We're looking forward. My name is Reich. I'm actually a researcher from Humboldt University, actually cancer researcher. So I'm doing data analytics, machine learning all this sort of stuff, and I'm um, a complete sucker for these uh, SpaceX YouTube videos where you see the cool rockets going to the sky, landing back, and I totally love these videos. So I thought I'd just drop by here, see, check it out, what you do, what you're up to. And if you need somebody with data science skills, hail, uh, with special emphasis on health-related problems, just drop by, talk to me, I talk to you, and we see what we can do together, okay? Okay, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Bharat Agrawal. Uh, I'm a student of space engineering at uh, TU. Um, and uh, I'm working on the idea of using space images for sustainable development. And uh, one of the areas we're focusing on uh, is, uh, is solar technology. And we, l we believe that we can, we can use um, space images to solve some of the challenges in, in use adopting uh, solar, solar uh, technology more. And uh, there are a couple of challenges here, like for example, um, in order to do, uh, in order to um, set up solar panels or solar farms, uh, um, they need to look at where, w what is the suitable place. And um, very often you have to do it in cities. And to do that, you have to do a, a surveying of, of the rooftops. And uh, this is usually done manually. And this is something which I, th I believe that can be done using uh, satellite images. And uh, so, uh, and also you can, uh, for on a larger scale, if, if you're trying to set up a solar farm, you're looking for land. And um, you want a lamb, land which has a lot of solar um, radiation, but you don't want to use a land which is also suitable for other better applications like producing food. So this is another thing we, I think we can solve using satellite images. And there are a couple of other ideas. So, um, so yeah, uh, this is our vision that we want to use 
images for sustainable development. And uh, if you have uh, interesting insights on how we can do, do this more, um, feel free to talk to us. What kind of profile are you searching for? Um, so right now we have two members of the team. Um, uh, I have a background in uh, space technology, and right now I'm working on uh, remote sensing so using satellite images. Um, and my, my partner has a, has a background in, in, again, space technology and, and electronics and communication. Uh, I don't know exactly what kind of background we're looking at because we, we still uh, are, are uh, working on the problem. Um, but if someone has interesting ideas in this, this uh, direction, then we're, we're happy to talk. Yeah. May, may need some software engineers. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Hello guys, uh, so we are a team right now, we are two people, and uh, our basic idea, uh, it's a very basic idea, uh, we are actually planning on sending a CubeSat, maybe one U or two U, to the moon, and we want to map this moon, and uh, we just want to study the craters and the surface of the moon, and we want to actually predict how the surface of the moon is reforming, and uh, based on the uh, volume of uh, craters which are there on the surface, and uh, because uh, if the craters they are l in large number, that 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 surface is being exposed more. If the craters are in le less number, that that surface has uh, just newly got reformed because craters had have not hit that surface, uh, you know, in 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 the recent time. So uh, based on that, we actually want to, uh, yeah, we actually want to uh, deduce the possible sites of landing, and then the possible sites of mining, which which actually the space agencies are looking right now. So if you people like this idea, please. Thank you. Uh, what kind of profiles do you want? No, anyone, anyone interested in the idea, please join us. Thank you. Do you have any numbers on your channel? No, I'm saying number one. Yeah, you will see that so that so people can join us. So number one point. Uh, yep. Very good afternoon, everyone. I am Ross, and I am here with my friend Johannes. And uh, I'll start again. So, good afternoon, everyone. I am Ross, and I am with my friend Johannes. I am a space engineer, and he's a computational linguistic, and we are working in the field of data science. So, we didn't really have an idea, but we had a problem which we thought we could solve. The problem was like, Sometimes you check on Google Maps and you see the drive is like 20 minutes away, but you spend another 20 minutes looking for a parking spot. So we wanted to use high resolution satellite imagery to predict if we could find a parking spot at a place. And how do we do that? Like the basic idea was we take some data from the past and see, like check the probability, what, how much probability is there that this spot could be empty. Also, like another idea was taking live imagery and trying to look into parking spots and help the customer go ahead and find the, give the customer data and value. And if any of you are interested in machine learning and uh, solving data problems, then our team is here, number 17, and you can come talk to me and my friend Johannes. Thank you. Uh, any other person wants to present himself or his team? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey. So my name is Eduard. I'm a I'm a space engineer, and our team is currently four people, and all of them are space engineers. And our challenge is to is to find a solution to make precision agriculture satellite data for precision agriculture widespread, so people can optimize uh, the use of water resources and fertilizers like nitrogen, 
currently the, there are several satellites who can do imaging in the in the visible spectrum. So the 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 idea is to try to complement this data with 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 imaging in the hyper in the infrared spectrum with hyper hyper spectral camera. So the challenge is to to see what data would complement the data that that, that is is currently currently available. And uh, after we see which data would be useful, we can we could design a, a payload for for the the Airbus satellite. And we can we we, we could launch the satellite. I don't know. We we, we could launch the, the satellite. And in the end, we would need to to do some kind of data fusion or artificial intelligence for analyzing the data. And we could make make something in the end useful and easy to use for farmers everywhere on the world. So that's it. And yeah, we are four people, and we need one, maybe a software engineer who who knows something about analyzing images would be useful. Okay. Is anyone? Anyone else? So, um, is everyone in a group? Um, okay, you should find a group of two to five people. Uh, it should be a final group of two to five people. We are going to take the numbers and assign you rooms uh, so you can work in, a, in personalized spaces. Um, yeah, basically. Yep. So uh, please wait for us to register, uh, to give you a number, and I send you a room, and uh, go to the developers or, or the people who are available, or the people who are available come to you uh, after you finish your project. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Anton, I'm the guy from the technical parts and uh, so uh, people are just uh, trying to find a team actually, they are just chatting each other, so I don't know if I will, if there is a new, is there is a meeting in, uh, in somehow, sometime, so I will maybe I will cut the stream for the moment, so I don't know, just leave it at the, the loop of the pause, <laughs> I don't know yet. I think I will cut it. D let me just check something. Uh, okay. Okay. So I see you if in this uh, afternoon. There will be normally more stream and an uh, interview about the mentors, about the people who are coming. So see you later, guys.